Welcome back to the channel. It's been about a week since the hearing on Alec Baldwin's motion to dismiss the grand jury indictment. As promised, the judge has ruled on that matter and we're going to break it down. Not to bury the lead, but the judge has denied his motion to dismiss. The court found six primary arguments contained in the defendant's motion. Number one, bad faith on part of the state. Number two, withholding exculpatory and favorable evidence from the grand jury. Number three, inaccurate jury instructions to the grand jury. Number four, failure to advise the grand jury of its authority. Number five, the state's failure to follow instructions of the grand jury judge. And six, the state's response constituting a waiver. That last point uh, basically meant that the attorneys for the defense claimed the state's response didn't cite any legal authorities and therefore they were waiving their right to contest the issues raised by the defense. So let's break these down and see what the judge had to say about each of these arguments. The sufficiency of the evidence upon which an indictment is returned shall not be subject to review absence of showing of the bad faith on the part of the prosecuting attorney assisting the grand jury. New Mexico appellate courts have limited other substantive reviews of proceedings before a grand jury. The Court of Appeals held, quote, we treat disputes over evidence before the grand jury quite differently. When there is such a dispute, the prosecution has broad discretion as to what evidence to present to or exclude from the grand jury, and courts will not review any good faith decisions prosecutors make in that argument, or excuse me, in that regard, once an indictment is returned. There is no post-indictment relief for a defendant once the grand jury returns an indictment absence of showing a prosecutorial bad faith. The court does not find prosecutorial bad faith. After review of transcripts from the January 18th and 19th grand jury prosecutions, the court does not find that the prosecuting attorney assisting the grand jury engaged in intentional misconduct, reflecting dishonesty of belief or purpose or motive in the course of the attorney's presentation of evidence to the grand jury. So a swing and a miss on that one. The court does not review the state's decisions regarding evidence presented to or excluded from the grand jury. Defendant conflates a prosecutor's duty to alert the grand jury to target offered evidence with a prosecutor's discretion to present exculpatory evidence. So what are we talking about here? New Mexico is somewhat unique. Um, the target in this case is the target of the grand jury, and, and that would be Alec Baldwin. And they have a right to be notified. They also have a right to testify before the grand jury. Uh, but they can also submit a letter, and that's what the defense team did here, was they, they included a letter uh, that was to be read, and we're going to get into that more in a minute, but it was to be read to the grand jury, and they called for a whole bunch of witnesses. They wanted them all to testify on their behalf. And they argued that the state had to present those witnesses. It didn't have a choice. And that what they're saying here is that's not the case. It, there's a lot of discretion that allows the prosecutor to decide what to present and what not to present. And at the end of the day, the court concludes that the prosecutor was not required to present and the grand jury was not required to order target offered exculpatory evidence. While the court acknowledged defendant's argument that Morrissey diverted the grand jury from hearing exculpatory evidence by redirecting grand jury inquiries to her own witnesses, the court does not find that conduct amounted to a structural error akin to that found in Herrera v. Sanchez. Although the state deferred certain questions, in many other instances, the grand jurors asked probative questions and received complete answers from witnesses without state interference. The court concludes that the, prosecutor, uh, the prosecutor's deferral of the grand jury question does not constitute structural error under either Herrera or the New Mexico appellate authority. 
The next point is pretty brief, but it pertains to the involuntary manslaughter instruction, and the court does not find error with respect to the contested jury instructions. The court concludes that the prosecutor adequately advised the grand jury vis-a-vis the then target's evidence alert letter. The state read the then target's evidence letter verbatim to the grand jury. After receiving the letter, the grand jury opted not to consider additional evidence offered by the then target. So they weren't interested in hearing what Alec Baldwin's witnesses had to say. It goes on to say that after the state read the target's evidence letter, the grand jury decided not to order production and presentation of the target's evidence. The court is not in a position to second guess the grand jury's decision in that regard and will not disparage the grand jury by doubting its ability to remember the grand jury judge's uniform jury instructions. So these were smart people. They knew what they were doing, didn't need any help. The court does not find that the prosecutor violated the instructions of the grand jury judge. The court declines to grant defendant's motion to dismiss on grounds of waiver. New Mexico law recognizes a, quote, strong bent in favor of deciding matters on their merits, close quote. And that brings us to the end. It is therefore ordered that defendant Alec Baldwin's motion to dismiss the indictment is hereby denied. I think the judge got this right. I am not at all surprised that Alec Baldwin's defense team filed this motion. He actually has several other motions to dismiss pending. Those are going to have to be ruled on as well. But for all intents and purposes, the fundamental indictment by the grand jury is now standing, which means we should be moving forward to the jury trial in July. Um, This is not going to be the same caliber of game that Miss Morrissey played against Hannah Gutierrez's attorney earlier this year. This is a whole nother level, and she needs to be ready and prepared to knock this one out of the park. So hopefully she's got the resources she needs and is going to make that happen. Stay tuned. I will continue to follow this case as there are developments, uh, but we're getting close. I don't remember the exact trial setting date, but uh, we'll look that up. And if there are any developments between now and then, I will post a new video. Until then, if you got anything out of this, please feel free to like and subscribe. And if not, that's okay. Uh, I'm just here because I love to follow things that involve shootings, gun-related litigation, anything like that. You're going to find it here on this channel. Thanks for watching.